after that terrible unboxing video, it is time to crack on with our comprehensive guide to Edge of the Earth. Oh, what's this? Dear idiot! Charming! I've gone off to pop up Gen Con to play in the new epic multiplayer standalone scenario. In the meantime, I've left you instructions on how to make a low effort top 10 list video just like real YouTubers do. Sincerely, Lita S. Chandler. I wonder what the S stands for. This is not the Arkham Chronicle way. We don't do top 10 lists. Flimsy cardboard and no practical insert, just like a regular deluxe. So this was probably our fault. Just because it is the same dimensions as one of the L5R premium boxes doesn't mean we should assume it would be made of the same sturdy stuff. Realistically, what would you store in a box this size anyways? After seven cycles, the game has outgrown most single box solutions. Let's hope the campaign box does better. This was definitely a shock. The original trial run of multi-class cards came in the secret name Mythos Pack in the Circle Undone cycle. There was literally one per class and FFG was so ashamed of these cards that by barely two Mythos Packs later they already retconned them back to single class cards. Now in a shocking U-turn they have gone into a multi-class frenzy with 41 new gold cards. There are now events as well as assets, including allies, even upgradable ones, none of which turn back into single class cards. Plus triple class cards too, and look at the amount of pips on these survivor cards, it's a disgrace. This is an easy one to miss. When multi-class cards debuted, they were a bit of a mess and you had to put your thinking cap on to try and work out if your investigator had limited or unlimited access to either, both, neither, or whatever classes on the card. Then the FFG shook things up by introducing all manner of clauses and exceptions to try and make them less restrictive but alienating poor Norman in the process, so they had to re her and fix that. Now with three classes on a card you would need even more convoluted verbiage and an entire page in the FAQ. So how did they fix it? By scrapping the limited rule altogether. If your investigator has unlimited access to at least one class on a multi-class card, it will never count towards one of your limited card slots. No more, your deck building must include the word other nonsense. Good call FFG. In the Dunwich Legacy, every class received a minimum of eight zero-level cards. In this set, each class gets a single copy of a zero-level permanent and only two or three zero-level cards. This product advertises itself as supporting up to four players with only a core box. All of these zero-level slots were sacrificed to make room for the gold cards. And just seven of those are level zero. Looks like there'll be a lot of decks with knives trending until the new revised core box appears. The translatable seeker card has been a hallmark of this game since the original Strange Solution, appearing in every cycle, apart from Circle Undone. Even the Harvey deck had his forbidden tome. Five years on seems an odd time to codify these rules that were perfectly content to appear on the cards themselves. Although it looks like there is very little room on cards these days. Look how small that font has become. We love Lily and she is the investigator we are most looking forward to playing, but as we have grumbled previously, her investigator ability doesn't really do anything. At least nothing that putting the permanent keyword on her signature cards doesn't already do. Maybe they were concerned she'd be a little too powerful as her signature cards are pretty spiffing already, especially in standalone mode. Nine weakness deck, here we come. Really? That's the best use of the space? There wasn't any spare art you hadn't sold off to Dark Horse? You don't think maybe some example starter decks could go here? Or at least an advert for a current or even a future game? How about details of the campaign box? Weaknesses of late have seemed a little lacklustre, with the majority of them being a simple double action to discard. Finding a new method of neutralizing them is great and really makes these weaknesses more deadly as healing damage or horror isn't something you can do naturally. 
it must be designed into your deck. Luckily, this set comes with some healing cards, so you aren't totally screwed if this is your only purchase aside from the core box. The previous cycle, the Innsmouth Conspiracy introduced new Chaos Tokens, and the players' cards went all in on embracing them. So, we were very surprised when we didn't see a single mention of a Frost Token on these player cards. Yes, you can use your Bless and Curse tokens in any campaign, and Frost tokens are probably more like Flood tokens being campaign specific, but still we expected something. That's not to say there couldn't be neutral cards or story assets in the expansion box that will affect the new Chaos tokens, so keep your eyes open. This is probably the best surprise about Edge of the Earth and the whole format going forward. Previously, we have told you way more about plastic than you've ever wanted to know. If you check out the base, you will see this has the number 1 in a 3 arrow triangle. This means it is a category 1 plastic, specifically polyethylene terephthalate, which is widely recycled by many civic recycling programs, so please don't send it to landfill. And if you aren't a YouTuber, you have probably thrown these away. But in addition to eliminating six plastic boxes, it also removes the need for nine sets of shrink wrap around each pack of cards. The plastic bags are of course reusable. You can use them for your tokens, for example. Right, that's your lot for this video. Hopefully once Lita gets back from pop-up Gen Con, we will be able to carry on with more informative videos. In the meantime, check out our investigator preview and our rapid unboxing. Let's hope she remembers to steal a copy of the new standalone scenario while she's there.